All right, so this time we're going to focus on electrical issues. So um, for a while now, my uh, rear cargo light stopped working with the, uh, the hatch being open, but it still turns on when the doors are open. So I'm just trying to figure out how this whole system works. I'm about halfway through getting it, and I found my issue, but I figure I'll help you guys if you need to find issues with your cargo lights and whatnot. So... First off, most people are probably going to complain that my lights don't work, or they work intermittently, or, you know, something to do with them not turning on. So the first thing you want to check is obviously that the bulbs are good. The, um, the front and rear cargo lights are all attached to the doors, so if you open any of the doors, they should come on. Uh, they should also be attached to your headlight switch, so if you turn your headlight switch to the left, they should come on. So that's the first thing to check. If I open the driver door, you notice that the light comes on. It's hard to tell that one is, but it's illuminated through the, uh, the cloth, so that's good. So we know that this door switch works and that our light bulbs work. So if we get in, close the door, light turns off. So now if we go over here, click this to the left, our light's back on. So that's good. So that means that we have a pretty functioning system so far. So if you notice that you don't open a door, or if you notice when you open a door the lights don't come on, this jam switch would be your culprit. What you can do is wiggle it back and forth and you know keep messing around with it and see if the light comes on eventually. If it does, you definitely need a new switch. All you gotta do, you can fit a socket around this, just pull it out and there'll be two wires or sometimes one wire. Just pull the wire out and put a new switch in. They're really cheap. They're probably like two bucks. So, you know, you have no reason not to replace it besides being lazy. And uh, if you notice that maybe the um, the power just doesn't seem to work and the switches seem to do good, the, the first thing I would check is if none of the lights work and, say, your clock doesn't work and your radio won't remember presets, come into your fuse box block and check your, uh, your dome light fuse. It'll be... Uh, that red one right in the top middle, that's your dome light. Check that, make sure that fuse isn't blown. Because if that's blown, then these dome lights won't work. So there we go. So once you've found that the light bulbs work and the switches uh, in the doors activate them, you are verified a lot of the important things in your system. So you know that all the lights have positive power and you know that they have paths to ground. So, now you're just finding out the systems that don't work. So, my rear cargo light doesn't come on when the, uh, the hatch is opened. So, if you notice the hatch is open, the light's not on. So, this one is tricky because it, it operates off two separate systems. So, in order to get all this off, I'll show you how to get that off. If you were to do it on the front, you take this cover off, just squeeze, and it comes right out. And you can see these pins. You need to get those little discs off. I just used like a needle nose pliers and pried them off and pulled them down. That's the only thing holding that in there. And you can just pull it out. Pretty simple. And if you bend them back, you can reuse them. So that's what those little discs look like. They're pretty simple. So once you get the discs out, you can drop the whole thing down and out of the way. Uh, in order to get back behind this, you're going to want to take off this metal panel. There's going to be five screws up here. They're all Phillips. So once that's dropped down, you can bend this. Mine was cracked a little, and I kind of cracked it some more. But it's covered, well, it will be covered with a headliner eventually. So now you can see what's actually going on in here. So... If you notice, on the right-hand side, you've got two grounds, and on the left-hand side, you've got one positive. All of these lights are um, switched on their ground, so they always have power. They're just waiting to be ground to work. So the first ground runs in conjunction to the front light and splits into every single door and the headlight switch. So if it sees a ground from any of the doors or the headlight switch, both these lights will come on. Now this back one uh, also has another input, and that's for the cargo uh, door over here when the, that opens. So that one has a, se uh, a separate ground, and if you notice that ground comes over here to this gray wire through here. 
and that plugs into the uh, the switch that would sit over here. So that gray wire up there runs through here into this spot and then runs all the way down your uh, your tailgate. So in order to get this tailgate panel off, there should be a bunch of clip panels like this and then you'll lift it forward and off. Um, mine, almost all the clips are broken, so there's like two clips over here and then a screw over here to hold it on, but I'm pretty sure that was put in by someone else. But once you get that panel off, you're looking for this set of wires over here. Your gray and your blue. So this guy right here is what controls this switch. You come over here, you can follow him through this hole, and here's the kit and caboodle itself. So this whole mechanism is what operates your hatch switch. So when this is closed, let's see if I can do this. There we go. So I'm not totally sure what makes the contact point here, but this is what it looks like when it's open and it doesn't touch any of this stuff. And then when you push the button to open it, it clicks down and something makes contact. So here's your blue and your gray. The gray is the um, the switch, it comes off the switch, and this blue one is a ground. So if your hatch isn't working, the first thing you want to check is to see maybe if this switch is working. So what I did is I, I took my, um, my multimeter and you set this to conductive or uh, continuity, I'm sorry. So when you touch these together, they beep, showing that you have continuity. So you'll check those terminals up there, and they checked out. So when it's closed, they have connection. So that's good. So then, next I checked to make sure that the wire had a ground. So I pulled off this connector over here. I'm sorry. I pulled out this connector and I checked this blue wire to make sure that it had continuity with ground. So I just touched ground somewhere. This headlight or this tail light uh, bolt right here usually has a decent ground, but you can try other things inside. So that one had a ground and that was good. So the only thing that I could figure out was the gray wire coming from this end of the switch going all the way over to this connector over here did not have continuity. So there's a break somewhere between the gray wire going from here to the tailgate. So that's the issue that I've been trying to figure out. And I've tracked it down to that gray wire being broken somewhere along the line. So what I did with this wire right here that you see, it's hooked up to the ground side of the light bulb. So this would basically be a jumper wire in place of um, that gray wire. So that gray wire runs into this a harness and then goes to the switch up here. So if I take this gray wire, or I'm sorry, my new blue wire and touch it to the gray contact here, look at that, the light works. So that means that this tests the entire system and what we're doing is we're giving it a ground source and that ground source I'm giving it is the switch where it would normally ground. I'm basically just jumping over the gray wire connection. Um, Something other to check that's actually rather simple and generally the case and what I thought was going to be my case is that the switch here will break because if you notice this gray wire splits right here and goes into black, that switch is um, what controls the, the cargo light. So if you turn it off, the light will not come on when the, the hatch is open. So most people that I've seen, the, uh, the switch is melted or cracked or broken. And if that's the case, you can either try and fix it with a push button switch, you can jump it so it's always on, or you can get a new one from the junkyard. So, um, yeah, just check that stuff out and uh, follow your connections. So I'm going to see if I can, you know, run a new gray wire and splice it in and see if everything works. So I cut the wire as far back as I could possibly get to it because it goes inside this little uh, cavern and then it'll come out through there and then through this grommet. So I cut the gray wire here on the other side of the connector and the switch and all that 
And uh, what I'm gonna do, I don't really feel like drilling into here and trying to like fish a wire all the way through here. It's possible, but I don't know if I feel like doing it. So something's gonna be a lot easier is to just run it inside this little rubber uh, window grommet. And then by the time it gets here, it should be about hidden. So you won't really see it. So I cut the gray wire again as close as I could or as far away. And there's not a whole lot left here. But before I start soldering and cutting and trimming and really make sure that uh, this whole system works. So the, uh, the switch has to be in for this to work as well. So I got that dangling. So when you flick the switch, they come on. Look at that. Cool beans. So now the cargo light works again. So that's all it was. The, uh, the gray wire here from somewhere between this point, running all through there to that point, the wire is broken. No continuity. Either rusted out or it got cut or something happened. So sometimes you just got to think, is it easier to try and trace the wire down and fix it or just run a new one? And in this case, it's so hidden and difficult to get to, it's going to be a lot easier to just run a new wire. Wire's not expensive, it's pretty easy. So, since this connection uh, works out, we're going to um, do these connections upright, put some heat shrink and solder and all that, and uh, go to town. Okay, if you've ever seen one of these things before, these little three hel uh, helping hands or extra helping hands or whatever the fuck you want to call them, they're extremely helpful. I feel like a magnet version would be awesome. But I just use them to hold the wires in place while I solder on them and it makes the job a whole lot easier. So, with our solder in place and our focus not in place. Okay, so solder joint is done. So, put your, um, your heat shrink tubing over top. And light her up. There you go. Okay, same on the other side. Alright, so with all that stuff on there, let's see if it works. So if you notice it's off, open it up. Hey, hey, look at that. Light comes on. And the push button, it shuts off. So, there we go. We got a fully functional light again. Easy peasy. So, you can see how I ran the wire. It's just chilling on there. Runs up into this rubber grommet. And then comes out. And I just soldered it into the connection right here. Cool. There we go. Light works. All right, so I got the cover back on. Everything's all cleaned up, looking pretty. Oh yeah, you can't even see the wire. It's like way back there and it's hidden pretty well. You see here a little, but I think that's a pretty good job well done. I'm happy with that. So this panel's back on. This is back on. Uh, in order to get these little uh, pins back in, I used um, some pliers, if I could find them. I used some pliers like this. And I had them open so that they had a little bit of gap. And you sit there and you push it in. And it'll take some resistance, but once it goes, it'll just slide up in there and lock in place. So with the bolt back in, look at that, light comes on. Cool beans. So I can put the cover back on and call it a day. Ta-da! So with that in place, close the hatch. Aha! I like it. Sweetness. So, there you have it. That's um, a pretty basic look into uh, how the dome lights work. But, uh, there you have it. That's how to fix your dome lights when uh, wires decide they're not going to work anymore.